So I went to Cordoba, and my, um, one of my major concerns, actually, about going was being in a place where there wasn't anything, so far as I knew, of a Jewish community. I mean, I hadn't lived in a place like that, really, ever. Um, and I was really quite nervous about what that was going to mean. Um, but when I, shortly after I got there, I met uh, a young man whose name had come to me from a number of different routes, uh, whose name is Jaime or Chaim Casas. Jaime, who uh, had recently himself become a Jew, uh, but had been working for some years trying to create possibilities for Jewish experiences uh, there. He had organized a Seder for the last two or three years. Um, started last fall, and I didn't realize this till sometime later, Last fall, he started having Friday night services on a regular basis in the, the room that was created within the museum so that people would see, could see what a synagogue was like. So the museum lent him the room to use as a synagogue. Uh, and I started going. And uh, we hit it off. I mean, he's just a total sweetie, energetic, enthusiastic, deeply committed to trying to revive uh, a Jewish community in Cordova. Uh, he insists that there are somewhere between 20 and 25, not families, but Jews in Cordova, which is a city of about 310,000 people. And was known as the second Jerusalem in the 10th and 11th, 11th century. And it was one of the major Jewish cities of the world. It had an incredible, it's where Maimonides was and uh, Ibn Gabiro. I mean, there were you know major poets and writers and philosophers. Uh, and there are basically no Jews left. Of those supposedly 20 or 25, I think we met four or five during the course of the year. But, um, you know, he was sort of indefatigable, and uh, it was really amazing. I mean, we would meet every Friday night, uh, and basically the service ended up being some combination of Ashkenazi tunes that I brought from the States and uh, uh, Moroccan modes of prayer that he learned in Marrakesh, which is where really where he learned his Judaism and his davening. And um, anybody, pretty much any Jew who came through Cordoba, uh, if they stopped in at the museum, would find out that there were services Friday night. So if it wasn't too late, you know, some of them would stay. So sometimes we would have a minion. Sometimes we would have 30 people. Sometimes we would have four or five. Uh, but we kept the thing, you know, he kept the thing going all year long. And it was really amazing. I mean, uh, Rosh Hashanah, he was there. I was away on tour with the kids. I spent Rosh Hashanah in Barcelona. But in Yom Kippur, he was, he had gone to Marrakesh. And I went to Madrid to find uh, a service. But Sukkot, we, he wanted to build a sukkah, so, you know, I participated in this. There was the first sukkah, uh, so far as we know, that had been built in Cordoba in over 500 years. Uh, we had a little celebration for Simchat Torah, again, probably the first time in 500 years. We lit candles for Hanukkah. You know, we had a Seder. I mean, it was just, uh, it was quite amazing to be doing that in Cordoba, down the hall from this exhibition on the Inquisition. Um, and it was really interesting because um, to be singing the Shema in that context where, you know, probably, you know, I mean, this is overly dramatic, but 
the last times that that was said was when people were saying it when they were being put to death, you know. Um, or reading Megillah on Purim at, in that context, you know, w the story about the attempt to destroy the Jews. I mean, it just was multi-leveled, multi-layered. Um, and it was very interesting because uh, Judith came and joined me in uh, December and was there for the rest of the year. And we were both very much aware that the services, I mean, the Friday night service that we did was a was out of a traditional sidur. Um, it's the most traditional davening I have done, either of us have done in years. Mostly we're not, we don't go to synagogues. We go to, we daven together in the Chavura. We make our own, I mean, there are few things that are from, the, we do from the traditional liturgy, but a lot of it is creative, you know, chanting, singing, reading poetry, blah, blah, blah. This was, you know, just from the, just straight. But it was all right, you know, sort of, I wouldn't do that here, but there in that context, it just felt so amazing to be able to be part of a community saying, here we are again. 